up, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, how are you guys doing? Uh, if you are like me, then you probably don't actually watch a ton of triathlons. I mean, uh, sure, we'll watch the Kona World Championship every year. Um, we might even watch a couple of ITU races. Uh, I saw that PTO uh, World Championship that was in like Daytona a couple weeks ago, amazing race, that was fantastic. Uh, but other than that, um, we don't watch a ton of races. I've occasionally gone and volunteered at a few local triathlons, and that is very interesting. They are nothing like the pro races. And when you're in the race, I don't think you actually get to see nearly as many athletes roll through the transitions. So uh, when you go to your next race, when you go and volunteer at your next race, watch those transitions. They are quite interesting. I would say, you know, if you see a smoothly executed transition, those are gonna be rare. They are not gonna be the norm. I think that what you will notice and probably remember are the athletes that kind of come out of the water and they are so frantic. Uh, they can't find their bike. They don't know where they're going. Um, they run out of transition with their TT helmet on backwards. Uh, I saw a guy trying to clip into clipless pedals for the first time in T1 and he could not make it happen. Um, he was definitely in that race mode. Uh, no joke, he actually fell over three times, ended up running back into the transition zone, uh, grabbing his shoes, and then he ran back onto his bike, jumped onto the bike, and continued his race uh, with just running shoes on top of his clipless pedals. Uh, and I know I'm not alone in noticing all of this craziness uh, because Wahoo, um, they actually mentioned, their CTO mentioned that they had seen a guy uh, basically uh, crash a $10,000 TT bike while he was finishing the bike section of a triathlon and trying to reach over and hit the split button on his triathlon watch. But the point is, transitions are a crazy place. Uh, your mind is racing. You're trying to think about how to uh, best execute that transition or just make it through the transition. Uh, and remembering your T1 or your T2 splits is probably the furthest thing from your mind. And I would say that might be actually a good thing. I think that there's more important things like safety to kind of keep in mind. Uh, but I can also, you know, on the other hand, I can definitely imagine how annoying it would be to get to the finish line of a triathlon. Uh, you know, you're bend over, just trying to catch your breath. Uh, you look down at your watch and you're still stuck in T1 or something like that. Uh, you, you're extremely disappointed because you didn't get any of that data from the bike or the run. Uh, and this is really where this Wahoo watch comes in handy. Wahoo has developed this new watch called the Wahoo Element Rival. And I would say that the key feature to this watch is something called touchless transition. And this is the ability to just simply start your watch when the gun goes off in a triathlon and then stop your watch at the end of the race and the watch will automatically take care of all the splits for you. So without hitting a button, uh, it'll get you your swim split, your swim to bike transition split, it'll detect that you're on the bike and then it'll get that split. It'll detect when you move into that second transition and then onto the run, it'll get that T2 split and finally get your run and total finish time. The marketing that they've given for this watch is never lose focus. And in my last video, my full kind of review of this watch, after having used it for a month, uh, I'll link it up here if you guys wanna check that out. I mentioned that I think this touchless transition is a very unique feature, and I don't think it's a feature that has existed on any sports watch as far as I'm aware of. And if you're like me, you probably have a lot of questions. And that's what I wanna do in this video. I'll do my best to answer some of the questions that I think you're gonna have about this touchless transition feature. The Wahoo Rival Watch has a ridiculous amount of sensors packed into this very small and light package. The watch itself only weighs 53 grams, but it has a GPS chip, uh, it has an altimeter, and it has an accelerometer. So it can combine all of this information uh, and the watch can actually detect and determine what sport an athlete is doing. For example, uh, a difference in pressure, you know, in that fairly repeated pattern, uh, as if your arm is going into the air and then into the water over and over again, 
uh, it can determine that it is highly likely that you are swimming. You know, keep in mind that the pressure of water is about 700 times uh, thicker than something like air. So determining pressure difference there is fairly straightforward. Uh, or for example, you know, your GPS confirms that you're going 10 to 20 miles an hour, uh, but your arm isn't moving um, based on the accelerometer data. Uh, you are probably biking or, you know, contrary to that, like the accelerometer does notice, you know, this bouncing motion uh, and it thinks maybe with GPS data that you're going slightly slower than bike speeds, you're probably running. And all of this is done with machine learning. Um, you know, what's funny about machine learning is that you don't actually write a ton of code. You're not writing logic to say, you know, if a user is bouncing, do this. Uh, if a user has water pressure, then they're probably doing that. Uh, but typically with machine learning algorithms, what you do is you provide them with a giant data set, really as much good data as possible. And you'll say that this type of data, you know, represents swimming, this type of data represents biking, and this type of data represents running. And the algorithm figures out how important each little data point is in determining the correct answer. So you'll give it a whole bunch of data and it'll give you um, a result like we are 95% confident that the wear of this watch is running. Uh, and, you know, I think it's just important that you guys know that it's uh, not some sort of evil witchcraft. Um, Wahoo doesn't have some sort of weird spy software on here. No one is watching you to determine, you know, when you're running or when you're walking. Um, it's just a learning algorithm, which I would say is no more evil than any other type of math. Uh, or any sort of statistics. Um, that being said, like statistics are definitely evil. And you know, the, the Skynet machine is indeed going to take over the world and kill us all. Uh, but you guys, you already knew that. So um, I would say uh, we can get into a couple more of your questions here uh, before um, our robot overlords enslave us. Uh, and your next question might be something along the lines of like, how is it possibly gonna know where the T1 or T2 timing mats are? And the answer to that is it's not going to, it won't. Um, it's not gonna know where your transition mats are. It's not gonna know where your um, transitions are. Uh, it's not gonna know where your mount lines are. It won't know any of that information. Uh, but what it will do is it will try to do its best to determine when you stop one sport, when you get out of the water, for example, uh, and when you start another one, uh, starting biking, for example, and it will calculate your splits based on those points. And your next question is probably like, well, that's not gonna be accurate. Uh, sometimes you have a huge you know, run up before you get to that timing mat, and you are correct. Uh, it will be very inaccurate. Uh, but one thing that's cool that Wahoo has done is actually allow you to edit and adjust those transition points within the application that they have, their smartphone app. It's called the Wahoo Element app, which I think is actually pretty cool. Uh, you'll have the option to auto upload any of your workouts or not. Uh, so in this case, it will make sense to not auto upload uh, just so that you have the time to make those adjustments to your splits before tapping that upload button on Strava. So, you know, if you do wanna make everything all matchy matchy with the race results, Wahoo has done a good job of making that possible. Uh, what if you get a flat tire uh, or, you know, you need to take a pee break or um, you want to stop for coffee or you see something cool on the side of the road and you just want to stop and like reflect on life. Uh, the rival watch will probably start to think that you are in transition and that is actually by design. It's not a big deal. Uh, it will think that you are moving on to the next activity. But as soon as you get back onto the bike and you get back up to speed, the watch is actually gonna figure out that you haven't stopped. And what it'll do is it'll actually retroactively fix that transition split and continue on with your bike split until you stop again. Uh, and this would be the same thing with swimming actually. Um, if you have one of those courses where you have to exit the water and then you have to get back in again, the watch can handle that confusion. Uh, and it seems to me that Wahoo has actually been working on this feature for a really long time. Um, they told me that they used about 2,400 data sets to actually train this algorithm. Uh, and I would say while 2,400 does seem like a very large data set, 
I actually have high hopes that Wahoo can, you know, have people opt in with their own personal data sets uh, and potentially provide even more data to make this even more robust. Um, you know, typically with these machine learning algorithms, you know, the more data that you throw at it, the better. Uh, and I asked them, you know, do you have plans to continue to refine this algorithm? And they said they definitely would, uh, but they didn't really provide any more information than that. I have no idea, you know, what kind of update cycle they're gonna have for this watch, uh, or even like what those updates would look like for this particular feature. I actually think that it would probably be hard to figure out, you know, when an update has happened on this particular algorithm. Uh, so as for my own personal testing, uh, last Saturday, I kind of put on my own little mock triathlon. Uh, one weird thing is uh, I wasn't really able to swim. Basically, it's, it's December here in the Pacific Northwest. It is very cold. Uh, I definitely thought about swimming. I have a lake close by that I really love swimming in. Uh, but I decided to fake the swim instead. Uh, what I did was I uh, walked in a circle around my cul-de-sac and I dunked my arm in a bucket of water. So again, you'll get that difference in pressure. Uh, so the watch will think that you're swimming. Uh, and then the walking around in a circle gave me pace and distance. Uh, and you know, your next question is probably like, okay, you know, did your neighbors call the cops? Did they think you were crazy? Yes, um, they think I'm crazy. No, they didn't call the cops. Uh, they've known for a long time that, you know, I do stupid stuff like this. Um, for these videos, you know, I there was one young lady who was visiting in the neighborhood and she thought I was weird. Uh, she actually took a video with her phone. So that footage is courtesy of Abby Von During. Thanks, Abby. Also, uh, after the hand dunking, not swimming, um, I did take a fairly long T1. I went inside, dried off my hand, uh, put on some extra layers for biking. And while I would say it did seem to take a while, for the watch to catch on. Uh, it did finally catch on and it seemed to kind of give me a longer transition time. So I think that that was fine. If you are hoping to kind of like glance down during your transition um, to get that swim split, you might find uh, that it still thinks that you're swimming. And what I would do is, you know, I would probably suggest glancing down, you know, right when you get out of the water, if you want to get an idea of how fast your swim time was. Um, or, you know, I think even the smarter idea than that would be, you know, just kind of ignoring the watch completely, you know, and letting it figure out the splits. Uh, as for the bike, I did about 30 miles with my buddy Jake. It was a fantastic ride. Uh, when I got off the bike, I kind of put my bike away. Um, it did notice pretty quickly that I wasn't biking and it put me into T2. Uh, but as I walked into my house to change into my running clothes, it thought that my walking represented running and it kind of just started my run. Uh, not a huge deal, um, but it did end up showing as a really fast T2. I don't remember, it was like 30 seconds or something. Uh, but that is something that I would probably want to correct uh, using that Wahoo workout editor option. So is this touchless transition worth it? Uh, I would say that it is a very cool feature. Um, I think that I would use it, uh, but it, I don't think it's that must have killer feature that you can't live without. Um, and I don't think that it is such a big deal that I would suggest that all of you guys, you know, like stop what you're doing, uh, run out, make this watch purchase. Uh, I'd say that the timing of this watch um, in this feature in particular is very unfortunate. Um, a lot of us aren't really racing at this point. Um, you know, and you know, really this is just a race feature. This is something that you're probably not gonna use all that often. Uh, I would guess that at most you might use it a dozen times per year. You know, if I race half a dozen times in a year, that's usually a good year. Uh, not to take away from the rest of the watch. The rest of the watch is fantastic as well. Um, I, there are a lot of things that I love about this watch. Uh, and there's definitely a lot of things that I really do think that Wahoo needs to work on. But I did talk about all of that stuff, you know, in my full review of this watch. Uh, and, you know, here's the perfect time for you guys to check that out if you want to. Uh, I'll leave a card over here somewhere uh, and you guys can check that out at your leisure. And as always, I want to remind you guys to get out there, swim, bike, run, rinse, 
and then repeat it all over again. And we will see you guys in the next one.